You are live. Hey everybody, Jason McKee here with the Buck Bomb. Uh, tonight we are going to go over uh, the aerosols for whitetail season. With white season, tail season's opening up in a few states. I think Kentucky opens this weekend. Several, actually, several states open uh, here within the next week, two weeks. So it's getting to be that time. Seeing a lot of a lot of trail camera photos with bucks actually shedding velvet. So it's time. It, are getting close to it so anyway we're going to quickly go over these i mean pretty much these four uh most people who are familiar with buck bomb know of these four these are the same four we've had for a while now the new one obviously is the extras so we'll just briefly go over uh the four of them obviously you've got the ambush which is a good all season uh scent it's good for a cover scent uh good for starting your mock scrapes um, around about this time of the year is when I would, as we discussed last year, this is this is when I would start setting up my own mock scrapes. So I would use one of these two, either an ambush or a dopey, to get that that mock scrape started. Um, both of these are good good cover scents, good all around scents. Um, and then obviously as, as you transition towards the pre rut and the rut, uh, you might want to mix in a dominant buck in a mock scrape, and obviously the doe and estrus uh, for your pre-rut and prime time the, probably the 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 one that we should talk about in in a little bit more detail is the extras this again this is new this year um it's a certified estrus meaning that it is going from the collection facility to a lab where they're testing it and confirming that there are actual estrogen hormones in the urine so uh, again it's uh it's a little different process they use to collect that urine um, and it is again being lab tested each batch uh, goes to the lab before it goes to the filler So they're certifying and making sure that there's actual estrogen content. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh quick reflexes Yeah, there's <laughs> actually e actual estrogen uh, Hormones in this so this is gonna be pretty exciting This will be the first year that it's gonna be gonna be out there for people to, to get in the field with and try it out um, I'm gonna be interested to see what the feedback is on it. So keep your eyes open for the extras um, I mean, really, other than maybe showing, uh, um, I mean, for anyone new who's not used one of the aerosols before, show you how the how the, the valve works real quick. The nozzle on the on the bomb. Tony, uh, well, I'll actually end up opening two of them. So, what we'll do is we'll set one of these off. I'm not gonna set the dominant buck off. I'll set the dopey off. So there are essentially, I mean, there are a few ways you can use the, the bombs. I mean, the obvious one, we'll do that one now. The most obvious is uh, basically you're going to go out there and... Um, so this nozzle, the valve, you can either use it basically or and just spray it in short bursts, longer bursts. Actually, if you turn the can down, you see it, it shoots more of a stream. But the other way to use it is, is when you depress this, this tab, you can actually lock it down, and I'm downwind of it, and just let it go off. And it, it'll essentially empty out the entire contents of the can. And again, you can kind of see as, as this thing continues to mist out, you'll see, you can actually visually watch it go with the wind and that fog. and so that scent's gonna stick to foliage um, as it's carried downwind. So it's kind of gonna kind of again almost. I mean, it's almost laying a scent trail for you without you actually having to make the effort to walk around and spread the scent yourself. But again, that wind's gonna carry it. It's gonna stick to foliage and leaves and stuff as it gets downwind of you. And as you can see, it it uh it puts quite a bit of the, the scent out there. And she's still going strong too. Yeah. <laughs> So again, that's that's locking the tab down. And then obviously uh, the other the other way, like I said, you can actually control it um, and do it in short bursts. So let's say you were, you know, as soon as you walk into your stand, I mean, you can literally spray a little bit at a time and you know, do a scent scent trail, similar to what you do, would do with a deer drag. Um, and you could obviously, you know spray a little bit on leaves around your stand if you don't want to set the whole thing off and in, in that sense say during the rut I know a lot of guys myself included 
try to spend as much time on stand as possible, including some guys, you know, doing all day sits. So you may not want to, you know, set it off as we showed you with locking that tap down and just, you know, empty the entire and can. It, you may want to have it just shut off by yeah, the way. So it runs a good while when you empty the whole can. Yeah, it does. But you, you may you may want to be able to, you know, use that can for an all day sit to where and again you're just letting a little bit off at a time. I mean, honestly, you could I mean, it's basically a wind checker. I mean, if you watch, I don't know if you can see it, but when I, when I spray that, you, you can actually see it. The wind's carrying it in this direction. So, I mean, it can basically double as a wind, wind checker besides just, you know, putting scent out there for you. So, anyway, just want to show you coming that uh, that valve lets you kind of control how you use it, whether you want to set it off as a quote-unquote fogger or whether you want to actually control how and when uh, or how much and when you're putting that scent out there. So pretty versatile product again we've got a uh, the dopey and the and the ambush which again are kind of your pre-season all season type scent good cover scents and then again around about the rut uh, is when you would you would want to maybe give a one of the two estresses a try or a, or a dominant buck again you know in a in a situation where maybe you're doing decoy you're, you're hunting with a decoy, maybe you want to put some scent down there, whether you're using a doe decoy or a buck decoy or however you're doing it. Um, again, just just a little something extra to, to maybe, I mean, I, I've had it happen to me before. I don't use decoys a lot, but um, on one occasion, I mean, it's been several years ago where I did, did use a decoy. I actually called Snortwees at a buck who was, he was probably about 100, 120 yards out crossing the field going away from me. And I Snortweezed at him and uh, he came he did turn and come my way, but he hung up about 75, 80 yards and just stood there forever watching that decoy, you know, checking the wind. He couldn't get the wind, um, and so eventually he he kind of spooked and lost interest when the decoy didn't move. But I'm not saying it would have made a difference, but maybe that that smell of another deer in a situation like that, where maybe maybe you got a deer that hangs up if you got a decoy out there, might help. It might help might help sell the sell the game. But uh, so Tony, we got any questions? Uh, not seeing any. Unless I'm not seeing it for some reason. I'm not seeing any questions right now. Looks like they're a quiet bunch tonight. All right. So then I guess we'll just go ahead and announce the the winner for the week of the hit list uh, trail cam contest. And I believe you said this week's winner is Daniel Thomas. That's correct. All right. Congratulations, Daniel. Uh, again, lots of really really good bucks showing up on the hit list contest making it kind of hard to, to to wait for opening day seeing a lot of good deer i i suspect there's probably going to be some good ones hit the ground with some of these states opening up um i know a couple guys in kentucky have had some good really good ones on trail cameras they open up this weekend um i believe north dakota opens up this weekend and i've got some friends up there that have had some good bucks on trail cameras so i'll be anxious to see over labor day weekend and uh what starts hitting the ground and then here in georgia I believe here in Georgia we kick off in what two weeks, middle, uh, pretty middle close. September. Maybe not, not even quite that much. So pretty much, no matter where you're at, um, I mean Alabama. There's a few states where the archer season's open later in October, but pretty much within the next 30, 30 days or so, it's pretty much going to be wide open. Do have one question 48. here. Uh, Leroy wants to know. Uh, and this is a great question for you, Jason, because you're from Illinois. Um, what do you do when they don't work? Deer ignore it here in Illinois. Um, well, I mean, it, it's it's really a lot like anything anything else. I mean, it's no different than calling or rattling or anything else. I mean, nothing's going to work 100% of the time. Again, I, I'm not I'm not a big proponent of using the sense while I'm hunting. I, I usually I, I mainly use mine for like my mock scrapes, um, and again, that's to get those deer coming coming into an area, come you know, um, coming in front of my trail cameras. Now I have had bucks, as we we've gone over before. I've had bucks shot standing in my in my mock scrapes before, um, but I mean, it's scents are no different than anything else. So they're not going to work all the time. It, it's similar to calling or rattling or anything else. It's like you're, it's a matter of you're really trying to catch that that buck in the right moment, the right state state of mind. I mean. I, I've I've snort wheezed at bucks before. I mean, in the heart of the rut, I mean, mature deer, and they same thing. They walk by as if you know nothing ever happened. And then, for example, this past year, I snort wheezed at the buck uh, I shot in Illinois as he was going away from me, and 
turn and then growled at him, gave him a, two good aggressive grunts, and he came in like he was on a string, and never broke stride, and I shot him walking at 12 yards. So, again, you know, different deer are, are no different than different people. I mean, some of them have different personalities. A buck might have run all night chasing the doe. He, he may just, you know, be wanting to, to get to a food source or get to somewhere to bed down, and, and he may, you know, so, again, no, no different than calling your sense. They're not going to work every time. And they may only, you may not even know when they are working. I mean, that's the reality of it. If a, if a buck's down range of you, he may get, I mean, especially with a bomb where this thing can carry, you know, I mean, up to a quarter of a mile, you really don't know. I mean, he, he may have been, he may be well out of sight and, and be not coming in your direction, catch a whiff of that and come in. Now, he may not come stick his, stick his nose right in like him, but again, with this thing carrying and dispersing a great distance away from you, most likely even out of sight depending on on what kind of terrain you're hunting in you you may not even know if it's working i mean that's that's just the reality of it i mean if the buck comes in from downwind then that very well may be it but again he may not actually actually come in and you know stick his nose right in the can um hopefully you've shot him before then anyway so no i mean it's like anything else no different than like i said calling or anything else they're they're not going to work all the time um and even even if they do help, even if they do, uh, you know, play some part in in bringing a, a buck in closer, you may not even realize that that's you know that that's what what it was. Leroy appreciates that. He says good advice. And he's got another question. He says, "What's the best time to put off a buck bomb if it's early early in the rut? And uh, is is it the best time in the wee hours of the morning, or before daylight, or what time what time of day would you do it? You know, in the first part of the rut." Well, it's kind of funny because that, depending on the weather, I, I've I've had I've had experiences where, you know, I've got nonstop action that first hour after daylight, and then it's it's shut off, and you know it's like with within that first hour that's pretty much all the action I'm going to see as far as bucks on their you know mature bucks on their feet chasing cruising, and then there's been other times where. For example, the buck I shot this past season. I mean, it was nine thirty. Caterpillar crawling up you. <laughs> it was not nine thirty before before I ever even saw that buck. I mean, so he he was just, he was just taking his time, probably going from bedding area to bedding area. So I don't again, I don't know that there's necessarily a a, a right time to do it based upon. I, I would base it upon really kind of the movement, what you're seeing. So I mean, if if for whatever reason you you know within the first thirty minutes of daylight you're 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 not already starting to see deer, you know, moving through your area. I probably I probably wouldn't put the scent off then. I would probably wait until I actually started seeing deer up on their feet in in my area, and then then utilize the scent. Um, uh, but no, again, another question for you, uh, from Daniel Thomas, our winner this week. He says, uh, if the wind's blowing into a bedding area from his direction, what scent do you recommend to to help cover his scent? Oh uh, well, hopefully hopefully you're not going to set up to where you're your wind is blowing into the into the actual bedding area um but i mean the the best case in that scenario is to try to be scent free obviously um but i mean as far as a cover scent you're trying to attract a buck i mean so i, I would want to use a you know a doe scent whether it was a straight doe pee or again depending on the time of the year if it's around the rut you know then you might be able to get away with a using one of the estrus scents but Ideally speaking, I would I would never want to be close enough to a bedding area if I knew that the wind was going to carry my scent into that bedding area. I probably just want to be in a different spot altogether. Good, good advice. Cool. Looks like that's all we got for uh, for questions. If anybody else has any more, uh, feel free to, to send them in after this video is over. So Daniel, I know you've been following us pretty much on a weekly basis. So, but in case you forgot, basically what you're your options uh, as this week's winner is the family of the aerosols or if your preference is you can also get the the four ounce which we have essentially these four right here in the four ounce family too so shoot us shoot us a message on Facebook uh, I think we already have your address I think, yeah I think we should already have it one. from previous yeah so we don't need your address we just need to know if you want the bombs or the four ounce and then also uh, whichever hat um, buck bomb hat you want and we'll get that out to you and tomorrow we will uh kick off a whole new week of the hit list keep the photos coming in again a lot of good deer showing up man i mean i think uh i think 
probably probably within the past three weeks I, I've seen I've seen probably I mean honestly it looks like the deer herd is healthy this year I, I know I know in the Midwest I talk you know I'm from Illinois got a lot of friends in Missouri and, and uh, um, Illinois and in, in that Midwest region and, and Kentucky and I know we had mild a pretty mild winter two winters in a row up there and it seems like seems like the, the herd is just really really healthy and you're and you're seeing it you're seeing it in the mature deer i mean just some unbelievable unbelievable looking deer this year um so i'm looking forward to getting back to the midwest myself so anyway keep the keep the trail camera uh photos coming i'm about to get it stung by a yellow jacket hey we're, we're about to run out of battery folks so if it happens uh we'll just have to say say you later but we have one more question uh mike becker says he's heard vanilla works as a cover scent is this true I mean, deer deer are a curious creature. I mean, it, you know, I've heard of a lot of people for years that have used uh, vanilla as a cover scent. So, I mean, you know, deer are curious. They live again. They live and die by their nose. I mean, I don't I don't know why vanilla would be alarming to them. I mean, it's kind of a foreign foreign smell. It's not like there's a whole lot of vanilla out in the woods. But again, they're they're not going to associate. I don't see any reason why a deer would associate vanilla with body odor. You know, like a human scent. So, again, I know a lot of guys who have uh used vanilla and various other things for cover scents i mean if if you wanted to try it give it a try there you go well give it a try and let us know how it works mike yep so again new hit list we'll kick it off tomorrow and we'll be back this time next week uh thursday for another facebook live cool thank you thanks guys see you next week